So as you have all probably heard by now, the RCS 2022-23 season has been announced and it's only a couple of weeks away. So many new roster moves have been announced, meaning we are going to see so many different matchups, and I am so excited. I started watching RCS first in Season X, and I have been in love with it ever since. I even watch it more than normal sports nowadays. But you know what that means, it's more motivation for me to grind. And I said if we hit 100 likes on our training routine, then I would release one for console players too. And you guys not only hit 100 likes, but doubled that. So I'm really grateful for the support, and here's the video you've been waiting for. Now the last training routine was built from workshop maps, and those are only for the PC version of Rocket League. And even recently, Steam changed their terms on the workshop, meaning even Epic Games players can no longer download workshop maps. So if you got a PC today, you wouldn't even be able to use the training routine either. So I understand the need for a console friendly routine. And this routine is going to be a group of training packs that will help build up your mechanics. And this will focus on both offensive and defensive mechanics. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Now unfortunately with our workshop maps there are no clear cut ways to train car control, so this training routine will be structured a little differently. However, as all training packs use the ball, your car control will naturally build up by just using these packs as a collective. But instead, this training routine will be structured in offensive mechanic training and defensive mechanic training. And then like the previous training routine, there will be sort of a free training section at the end. So let's get started. So to start with this training routine, we are going to be training defensive mechanic. I've said this before in previous videos, but I think it's important to start with defense because it's usually the training that people leave out. They see flashy offensive mechanics and are drawn towards those, meaning they forget to train defense. And let's face it, no one wants a player with no defense in their ranked games. I promise you. So by putting defense first in the training routine, it forces you to get that out of the way, then afterwards you can train offensive mechanics. So for training drill number one, we are going to be using shadow defense training pack. Shadow defense is one of the most important defensive skills to have as a Rocket League player. No matter what rank you are, you will always face a situation where your opponents have possession and are making their way to your goal. Therefore, there is always a time where you have to turn around and shadow defend your opponents. This training pack helps you with that exactly. It gives you shots to save from a shadow defense position. But not only do you want to just save the shot, you want to put the ball into a safe position. So that usually means putting it into the corner. I suggest you go through this training pack for 10 minutes, aiming just to save the ball into the corner. However, if you find this training pack too easy, then I suggest you use a more difficult alternative called uncomfortable saves. This training pack basically puts you in the most awkward situations and you have to save the ball. And this is actually extremely common, so it's important to practice it. I suggest do the same 10 minutes and only try to save the ball in the corner. Training drill number 2 is going to be using the Way Power Clears training pack for 10 minutes. Power Clears are incredibly helpful on defense. There's nothing worse than being constantly under pressure in your half and the opponent keeps stealing your boost, because it usually ends in them scoring on you. However, there are sometimes ways to prevent that from happening and that is by clearing the ball. But if you can't clear the ball with power, then you're just giving the ball away right to where they want it. So for this training drill, I want you to focus on hitting the ball with as much power as you can. The main goal is to hit the ball as far as you can, but I want your minimum goal to be able to hit the ball past the halfway line without it bouncing. Most of the time, clearing it high and past the halfway line is enough time to give you and your teammates boost and relieve pressure on defense, so that's always the target I want you to think about. If you have Bucky's mod and want to push yourself further, then I suggest instead of way power clears, you use Kevpert's wall power clears. This uses the custom training variance feature to give you difficult situations where you have to power clear off the wall. This training pack is a lot more difficult and is definitely a good training pack if you're at a higher level. Same focus still applies, getting that ball past the halfway line without it bouncing. Okay, for training drill number 3, we are going to the more difficult side of defense, and that is going to be using the recover on the backboard training pack for 10 minutes, and basically this training pack is being able to save a shot and recover on the backboard instead of just landing awkwardly on the floor or in your net. Being able to recover on the backboard lets you continue play as fast as possible. However, I understand some of the lower levels might not be able to complete this training pack to the highest level possible, so I'm going to break this training drill into an easier and more difficult version. So for the easier version, all I want you to do is save the ball into the corner and then land on the backboard. Just being able to do this will make it so much easier for you on defense to get back in position quicker. However, if you want to do one better, 
then I will need to save the ball up, recover on the backboard and control the ball again. After that, I will need to mix up your different options, whether that means you clear the ball as fast as you can, air dribble as far as you can or just decide to slow play the ball. Being able to have options off your backboard is really effective, you never know when you might want to use either option, so it's good to be able to do these consistently. Practice these for 10 minutes alternating between the three and you'll see a huge improvement in your defense. Now training drill number four is sort of a bonus drill for the higher ranks. Most of the lower ranks won't really be able to do this training pack, but it's worth to give it a try regardless, and that is the back wall air dribbles training pack. This training pack is where you're positioned on the wall and the ball is coming towards you. You basically have to soft touch on the wall, then air dribble the ball out. And as the usual, you want to aim to getting the ball past the halfway line without it bouncing. Practice this drill for 10 minutes, and if you're a higher rank, try getting the ball past the halfway line, then getting a flip reset at the end. Little things like that throw your opponents off and could just give you that extra bit more time and space for your teammates. These defense drills purposely get tougher and tougher as you go on to help you improve more and more as you get on with the training routine. For higher level players, the first drill might just serve more as a warm up but it's important regardless. I think spending 40 minutes on defense is more than enough time for you to see big differences in a short period of time. And if you think you want to spend more time on some of these drills then by all means do so, the more training the better you'll get. Okay, so now we've gone through all the defensive drills, so it's time to move on to the offensive drills. These drills will mostly focus on expanding your offense through shooting from different areas of the field. Practicing these are incredibly important. The more opportunities you can score from, the better. So let's get into it. Training drill number 5 will be the ground shots training pack for 15 minutes. I don't know how many times I've said this, but ground shots are the one skill I think everyone can always improve on. So I always suggest spending more time in this training pack. But not only do you want to just complete this training pack, I want you to make sure you score every shot without the ball bouncing. This helps you focus on hitting the ball with power, and that is a really underrated skill to have, especially in the lower ranks. If you find that too simple, then try aiming for the corners instead. Each time before you shoot, call a corner you want to aim for and you will start to feel more consistent in your shooting. Now training drill number 6 is going to be a combination of two training packs, and those are aerial shots redirect and aerial shots pass. These packs are just a bunch of shots from different aerial situations. Not only do they train shooting, but they also help with aerial control. Now the rules for the last drill also apply to this one, and that is to aim to score without the ball bouncing. But also I want you to aerial to the ball as fast as possible, because you're not going to have a lot of time to reach these shots at the higher ranks. I want you to spend 15 minutes on these drills and I don't mind how you split the time. You could just alternate on different days or you could just split the time 50-50. But make sure you have an even amount of time spent on both of them. Now training drill number 7 is quite a tough training pack but it's incredibly important to train. And that is using wall shots training pack for 10 minutes. Rocket League is unique because you can use the walls and ceilings to expand your gameplay. And a lot of the lower ranks neglect this skill for a very long time. Even as a GC2 there are still sometimes I find myself really awkward when going for the ball from the wall. So if you practice this training pack at the lower ranks then you'll have a huge advantage on your opponents. As this drill is quite difficult, most of you won't be able to focus on scoring without a bounce. So I only suggest you focus on this if you really want to push yourself. Or even then try getting a little creative maybe control and go for an air dribble flip reset or go for something like a double tap. It's good to improve mechanics in multiple different ways. Training drill number 8 will be to use double tap playground for 10 minutes. And this is as simple as it seems, just setting yourself up for your own double taps. Double taps are incredibly effective. When the opponents are all stacked in net, it's not worth it to just try shoot straight away. Being able to double tap when they're all in net makes it so much easier to score, as once you aim it at their backboard, it's incredibly hard to defend. Also, being able to read the walls and ceilings means you can jump for the ball quicker, which improves the overall speed of your gameplay. If you have Baki's mod, then I suggest instead using Kevpert's advanced double taps. This training pack uses the custom training variants again to bring in different variables to improve your muscle memory. So if you have Baki's mod and you want a tougher training pack, I suggest you watch my last video and get the instructions on how to set it up. Now for training drill number 9 and the last offense training drill, it will be to use the delayed flick training pack for 10 minutes. Now for this training drill I want you to solely focus on a mechanic, whether that be just normal 45 and 90 degree flicks, it could also be flashy flicks like musty or breezy flick, or the more difficult option is to practice ground to air dribbles. The main focus of this training drill is just to expand your offensive options when the ball is on your car, so I don't want you to practice
practice something you're already comfortable with, because the aim of this whole training routine is to get out of your comfort zone and improve your mechanics, so it doesn't matter if you find it too difficult, don't get discouraged and keep practicing it, because you'll start to see bigger improvements the more you push yourself. Now for the final stage of the training routine, it's going to be what I call the free training section. And this literally is just going to be your chance to train what you want and have some fun. You could put more time into some of the other training drills, or it could be to learn a completely new mechanic. And this could be something that is completely unnecessary for your rank. I was never the mechanical player in my previous time playing Rocket League, so recently I've been trying all sorts of flashy things. I've even recently been trying to learn double flip resets. The whole premise of this part of the training is to honestly just have fun. Even even though my goal is to help you improve as fast as you can, remember the whole reason you play Rocket League in the first place is to have fun, and if you start to find training boring, then you're least likely to stay consistent with it. So go crazy, and get creative. Well there you have it, my full training routine for console players using nothing but training packs. Helping with both offense and defense, there are so many different training packs ranging in difficulty for you to use. And even if you find some a little easy or a little too difficult, trust me in sticking with them because each training drill has its advantages and will help you improve, or it will just help you be consistent with what you're already confident with. Now this console training routine might be different to the workshop map training routine I made not long ago, but it's a lot more difficult to create a training routine with a lesser range of options. So if you enjoyed this video and you found this training routine helpful, then I would really appreciate it if you could like, comment and subscribe. And if you want to support me further, then use my epic creator code one eyed Ghoul at checkout when you buy something in the Rocket League store. But that's all from me for now, see you guys next time.